What is up? This is your LA in a Minute, and I'm here at Rancho Cucamonga off of Route 66 on Foothill, Rochester. It's a normal intersection with four shopping centers, but it could have been one of the biggest theme parks in the world if a former Disney exec had its way. And in fact, it would have been the largest Bible-based theme park in the world called Bible Storyland. What? Let's get into it. Developed in 1960, Bible Storyland was supposed to be a $15 million amusement park dedicated exclusively to dramatizing biblical lore. The park was going to have various areas based on the Bible. This was a rendition of the Garden of Eden. This would have been King Solomon's temple. There would have been rides, streets, bazaars, restaurants, dioramas, all based on the Bible. The plan was for Bible Storyland to become a major attraction in the LA area. It was going to complement Disneyland, and like Disneyland, was supposed to be a must for tourists all over the world. Now, Rancho Cucamonga was simply known as Cucamonga at the time. It was unincorporated and was mostly vineyards. Again, on what is now Rochester and Foothill Boulevards, right in the middle of Rancho Cucamonga, it would have been a 60-acre theme park, 100 acres of parking, and 60 acres for a Bible Storyland hotel. Bible Storyland was dreamt up by Nat Weinkoff, who's actually credited with selling the concept of Disneyland to investors five years earlier. And the team of investors he had for Bible Storyland was a powerhouse. It included Jack Haley, who played the Tin Man in Wizard of Oz, Bruce Bushman, a Disney executive who was credited with coming up with Fantasia and the Mad Tea Party ride at Disneyland, as well as Donald Duncan, who was credited with popularizing the yo-yo and inventing the parking meter. The heart-shaped park was going to be divided into six different areas. Garden of Eden, Rome, Egypt, Ur, Israel, and Babylon. But within two months of the announcement, 35 local churches banded together and opposed the development. They said that the park would promote religion as a commodity, and it was a gross misinterpretation of biblical literature and insensitive to religious values. And the Weinkoff and the investor team continued to sign on more Disney creatives to help flesh out the theme park. By 1961, they still hadn't broke ground, and the clergy's opposition was even more vehement. By 1962, the project was an afterthought, and the only thing remaining were the images of what could have been. So today, this intersection is part of Route 66, but if that Disney exec would have had his way all these years ago, it would have been the biggest Bible-based theme park in the history of the world, Bible Storyland. All right, LA, it's been a minute.